says come to the parks. So they themed it, and now there's soap flying in the air? There's, uh, I didn't realize how, how many things are special at the resorts, specifically. I mean, I kind of always knew that they had, obviously, the party and the parks were decorated and there were special costumes for the characters, but I didn't realize how much they put into the resorts. Did so they put soap at the resorts, too? Special soaps. Soaps on ropes. No, the soap. <laughs> this is a children's podcast. Um, no, the soap they fly in the air. They uh, to yes, make everybody every, clean. Every guest room. <laughs> to make everybody clean. <laughs> Get rid in. of the stank. It's just full of soap bubbles. Mm. Uh, no, they have like uh, at as we're going to talk about today. They have some special installments. Like, um, can you at, turn me up? I can't nope, hear anything. I don't. I don't think that I need to turn you My up. My cans at all. are I think, low. I think you're good if you're a, a little bit quiet. Anyway, they have <laughs> a couple special things. And that was the episode that ended it all. The Grand Floridian has their um, their special uh, gingerbread house and the. The Wilderness Lodge now has a gingerbread cabin. There's a couple other things that we're going to talk about today that are special to the parks. But today is episode 24. I'm your host, Kate, once again joined by Patrick, who is sitting to my left ever so patiently. He's so excited to be here today. He's in the holiday spirit. Oh, Merry Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Yep, let's leave it at that. <laughs> nice pause. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. Uh, we're going to kick off today by sharing a review from Apple Podcasts that I didn't even tell Patrick about. Oh, no. Somebody likes us? Yes. Or was uh, this a negative review? Please, no, be, no, no, please, no, this please, is a good please, review. Please be a review. negative one. No, we have not gotten a negative one yet. Right. You can be sure we'll share it when that happens because it's bound to happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is from Arby M. And they said I love that. Their sandwiches. Um, this is spelled differently. Okay. A R B I E instead of A R B Y. Shame. Regardless, they said, I recently found the Earful podcast and can't say how much I enjoy listening to Kate and Patrick. They can't are... say it. <laughs> I can't. It's a secret. <laughs> they are so entertaining, and I may or may not have laughed so hard I snorted listening to them. Oh, snorted. <laughs> yeah, snorted. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Keep up the good work. Us Disney freaks have to find a way to get our Disney fix even when we can't be at the parks. Amen. So, thanks, Arby. Thanks, Arby. Um, if you have any sandwiches you want to pass our way, that Or would you be want great. to be a sponsor, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah. The other Arby's. Oh, all right. You want to get right to it? Oh, I thought. What, what was that? That was our review. Oh, I thought we were right to it. This is now we're here. Don't you have to play something to go right to it? I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go to the parks. There it is. Uh, they recently said this week they being Disney. <laughs> Who's they? <laughs> the powers that be have said that they're going to reissue the offer for their four park magic ticket now this was a ticket they introduced last year it's a four-day pass that includes admission to all four of the theme parks for as low as 89 dollars a day now date-based pricing is still going to be in effect so you may not get it for that low but that is the lowest point that they can start. so when do you think during the year you can get 89 dollar tickets if I had to guess, uh, January, February. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Mm-hmm. Pretty Basically, much. that would be the lowest in my um, estimation um, because once you get to April and May, you have all the school groups that are there. June through December, it's it's pretty it's pretty high, pretty high up. Yeah. Um, so this does not include Park Hopper. You're you're limited to only doing one park a day. But this year they have included a forty dollar add on that will get you admission to one of the water parks and. Admission to the NBA experience at Disney Springs. And that's a bucket list for you. Not the that basketball experience, not. but the water park. Yes, I would love to get to one of them. And also, you don't share this with me, but I would love to do the mini golf. You know, you know how we always get a free voucher? Why do does that not golf? appeal to me? Every time I've brought it up, you just seem very lackluster about it. I seem lackluster about most things. Yeah, it's this marriage, this podcast. <laughs> Ding 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 ding! ding, ding. ding. <laughs> you didn't get a voucher for our marriage, <laughs> anyway. Um, There's vouchers. Yeah. So, it, uh, along with this, you can use these tickets. They are valid for seven days from your chosen start date, which usually is dependent on a couple of other factors because of the new date based system. But this is going to be valid for seven days. Cool. From the first use. So. It's a pretty nice ticket, pretty nice deal for those people that are looking to do like a standard ticket. But and if I was just to walk up in January 9th and say I want a day ticket, it's got like a hundred and some. Why did you pick your birthday? See now, why would you do that? <laughs> but as you said, January, so I picked the date. Yeah. So how much would they a ticket on a normal day be in January? Uh, I it's, it's I couldn't tell you off the top of my. You head. can tell me. I'm not that good. Oh. That that's something that would be. I'm curious how much of a savings that is. 
Oh, sniff. <laughs> I'm just thinking it's two dollars and seventy. No, I have no I idea. Made her snort. I have no idea what the new what the new prices. Is. <laughs> I made her snort. She snorted. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, moving over to Magic Kingdom. As you know, Magic Kingdom offers early morning magic hours. This is a specially priced block of time where you can come in and sample some rides without the big crowds. This is not extra magic hours. This is early morning magic. So they are going to change it slightly um, into January and February. And some of the extra, extra early, extra awesome, extra, I'm having a stroke. Early morning magic hours will now offer special access to Cinderella's carousel. It's Prince Charming's carousel. It's one of their carousels. And you're also going to be able to see uh, special Disney characters like the fairy godmother, Drizella, Anastasia, and Prince Charming. They may be there to celebrate with you. Ooh, (laughs) B-list. B-list celebrity? (laughs) B-list Disney. Oh, boy. We should do a a ranking system of like the top meet and greets and the B-listers. Also, they're going to offer special Cinderella-themed food and drinks. Come and meet Figment. (laughs) Aw, that actually would be probably really popular, I bet. Uh, You're going to have the special drinks and food along with the All You Care to Enjoy Breakfast, which is located at Cosmic Rays Starlight Cafe. All You Care to Enjoy. Mm -hmm. Not All You Can Eat. All You Care to Enjoy. I like that. We're not calling you fat. (laughs) We're just saying you like to enjoy a lot. (laughs) Big bone. Pricing for this is $89 for adults and $79 for kids. So is 89 our magic number of the day? Our magic number is 89. 89. Okay. 89. Uh Over at Hollywood Studios, there was a brand new poster released for Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. This new poster features Mickey and Minnie scuba diving into some sort of lagoon, looks like Finding Nemo, with a, uh, you know, of course, a railroad, a railroad car right in the middle of it all. So obviously hinting at that we're going to jump from the Runaway Railway into some water at some point. And there is also a new slogan that is tied in with this ride, and it is burst into a world where mouse rules apply. Huh. So, Patrick, if, if this is true, if mouse rules apply in this ride, what are the rules? Don't eat the cheese. <laughs> it's Mice would. It's poison. Or it's, oh, <laughs> it's, on a, it's on a mouse trap. That's right. Don't eat the cheese. Don't touch it. That's right. What, what other rules would there be if mouse rules apply? Uh, mouse rules apply. Um, let's see. Um, there must uh, be three blind ones. <laughs> At all times. That's right. Yep. That's right. They stagger around. Mouse rules. I don't know. Um, they squeak. Don't, I don't, don't know. Don't eat the green bricks. Don't touch the oh, green bricks. No. Oh, sore subject in our household. Bad household. subject. Anyway. No. Uh, this is now, the, the bottom of the poster says it's supposed to open in spring of 2020. Yeah, well. We'll see. Was we'll see. supposed to open in like 2019? I, you know, that's a really good question. I don't know. <laughs> So I hope you brought it up because I have no idea. I thought you were going to go off into like yeah. Some, you know like what? Sub-tangent. Thank you, thank you for. I have no idea. <laughs> Tell me all your secrets, Patrick. Oh, uh, we don't have time for that. Oh, boy. and that last gentleman gave us a review and said after we had uh, done the episode with his sons on, <laughs> yeah. he came out and said to his friends like, "Oh my gosh, you have to listen to this. There's some like language, and I like literally like it hurt." L- did it hurt a little it bit? It hurt a little bit. I was like, oh, did we, we have, have language? Of, no, I think we have a couple of jokes every now and then that maybe little ears shouldn't hear. Y- and you're right. And, and actually, and quite honestly, it I felt bad about that. It makes want to be better. It does. We can be better. Yeah. And we you don't have what? to talk like we that. Could, we can say right now in this episode that every time we make an off-color joke or swear, we're going to donate a dollar to charity. How about... To the charity our charity is my student loan debt, <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to go right back into my pocket. So, but we have to make some rules. About what, what I want everyone to be able to listen. to I us. do too. I don't want to. I, I don't think you be know dirty. what this means. I have to cut you out of the show. <laughs> no, we know oh, that it's about time. We know that I'm the one that usually swears or makes the off color joke. Oh no, that's not true. You don't that's think not so? true. No, I think that probably was me that last. Maybe episode. that'll be our this or that for this week. Who who swears more? No, Kate no. or Patrick. I, I think I think we could strive to be better. I do. We I can, think we can do because that. we want to be better for Sparrow and Stitch. Yeah, absolutely. I don't. I don't want them they to have to be edited. Us. I don't want to be edited. I, I think he just meant that there's a couple of like you know like we might say the S I know, word. But I but it, sales. <laughs> Um, I think Swiss. We can... <laughs> I hate the Swiss. Oh, there it is. I think we can be better, and we will. We All will right. be better for Moving you guys. Moving on. We want you to keep listening. Mouse to rules apply. Mouse, no swearing. Mouse rules apply. That's right. That, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. No swearing. That applies to our show now, too. All right. uh, I put this under experiences and shows. <laughs> There's you, Donald. You giggle every time you hit that button. Donald, that makes me happy. Uh, so Gaston, over at Magic Kingdom, got a brand new costume. Which I know Patrick is 
Yeah, because the old one was starting to smell. Well, the, the, the problem with the old one was that people were saying that the fake muscles looked kind of fake, which they were fake, obviously. Um, so now he has a darker red shirt, which is more akin to his shirt from the animated film. He has different boots and also darker pants. Mm. And as I always already said, he has less muscle padding. So the actor, <clears throat> the friend, the friend of Gaston, of Gaston. Right. has to be more Gaston-y than me. <laughs> How do you, what are you saying? I'm more LeFou. <laughs> <laughs> you know your place. I know, I know my place. I'm more short and stocky than tall and muscular. Yeah, well, we've seen that too when we've seen the stage version where we've, you, you can see shows where people have made other people wear the muscles and looks very yeah. out of place. Not right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm happy for this change. I, I think he's one of the best meet and greets in all of the parks. He's very witty. Have you ever done that one? Uh, no, because I'm a guy. Well, that's even better. Mm. Yeah, because then you get him to like do like push-ups and stuff. No, I've never done that. <laughs> Which I know is right up your alley. <laughs> right up my alley. You say push-up, I say Patrick. Push-up, Patrick. Push-up, Patrick. <laughs> No, I strangely enough, I have not done a push up with Gaston. Well, bucket list. <laughs> we go in June. There Finally, go. a reason to go. Let's go. Yeah, you want to buy some merchandise? Play a oh, I thought you were, I was waiting for you to like say yes. I didn't think there was a choice. There was a choice. There's never a choice. Anyway, um, so this is kind of cool, and I can think of many people who listen to the show that might want to buy this piece of merchandise. Emily. Um. No, actually, I think of your daughter. Really? Yeah, because she doesn't listen to this. <laughs> nope, <laughs> but she might want to buy it. Um, there's a new spirit jersey, and it is going to be in celebration of the princess and the frog. Get this, it's tenth anniversary, which what? I don't think is possible. Ten years. But this new spirit jersey is is in a very delicate lime green, and it features on the front a really pretty tiara, and on the back it's Tiana, not Tiara, Tiana, and then ab- above her it says Shine Bright. It's very pretty. It's a very pretty spirit jersey. And I will tell you, that is my daughter's, both of them, teenagers. Mm-hmm. That's their favorite Disney movie. Mm-hmm. And, uh, they Favorite princess. I don't know about movie, really? I, I think they love the movie, really? but they also love the princess, too. And they're going to love the new uh, restaurant that's coming to the new hotel. There's going to be a new restaurant that's themed in The Princess and the Frog. So many new. We covered this a couple episodes ago. Were you there? Was I there? I don't know. Anyway, if you'd like to buy this spirit jersey, it's sixty four ninety five on Shop Disney or in the parks. Yeah. Cheap at half the price. What would you say? I don't know. <laughs> Cheap and half the price? Cheap at half the price. It's not half the price. Yeah, but it should be. It's not. <laughs> They're making money. Speaking of things that are cheap. <laughs> Thank goodness, because they were running out. I know. Yeah. Of spirit jerseys or yeah. money? Yes. I don't think they're running out of spirit jerseys no. ever. No. Um, but it's funny because I, we noticed a lot on our last trip when we went to SeaWorld how they've kind of done knockoff spirit jerseys at, at their, their version of it. They're actually pretty cute because they yeah. had like Cookie Monster ones and Elmo ones. And yeah. Yeah. It was a really cute Oscar one. I really wanted to buy, but I did not. Sad. So yeah. proud of you. Thanks. Uh, resort time at Disney World. So, boy, um, oh boy. I don't have a resort sound effect. You shouldn't. I, Keep going. I, sh- I, I, yeah, I don't. I have this one. This one kind of kind of suffice. Welcome, foolish mortals. To the resort. That works, right? Okay, sure. sure. Um, at Yacht Club, the Christmas Village is back. So the Christmas Village is basically like a really classy train set with a Christmas Village, like you normally see on your grandmother's mantle place. Uh, but this Christmas Village is going to feature Anna and Elsa, and it even has a tiny sign that is for Beaches and Cream Ice Cream Shop, which is around the Yacht Club and Beach Club. Uh, this is actually really kind of cool. If you are a fan of the Margaritaville Resort, it is now a booking option for Disney World packages. So you can. It wasn't rent- before. Well, it's it's one of those things that it's kind of on the fringe of what you can book for Disney. I'm going to explain in a second because you know how there's like that tier of resorts that are called Good Neighbor. Right, but this one, that's on property. Ish, kind of. Sort of like the Disney Springs area, those hotels that are around there that are not one of the Disney hotels, that's kind of considered off site as well. Hmm. So, right. anyway, um, you can book a vacation cottage. It's not located on property, but it's located near the Disney World Resort. You have access to everything at the Margaritaville Resort, including the Sunset Walk Retail Center, the Fitness Center, the pools, and more. However, you do not have access to the Island H2O Live water park. Huh. Yeah. All you right. can take the Margaritaville transportation to Walt Disney World, to the Ticket and Transportation Center, 
And the other perks include the ability to book your fast pass at the 30 day window. So you don't get the 60 day window. You only get the 30 day window and you don't get magical express or the dining plan or extra magic hours. <laughs> <laughs> so it's an option, but you, like you said, you want to check every time that you book a good neighbor hotel because every hotel has different perks. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're Swan and Dolphin, they have really good perks. If you've done Four Seasons, they have really good perks, but every place is different and there's no consistency. Like you might get Magic Band, you might not. You might get 60 Day Fast Pass, you might not. You might get good transportation. Just make sure that you're double checking. Of all the good neighbors, which one would you want to stay in? State Farm. You're there. Like a good neighbor. Um, Recently, simply because it looked really cool when we were there, uh, was the Swan and Dolphin. Mm, uh, Really? Architecturally, it just looked really neat from the outside. Mm. And I love that area. I love the boardwalk area. Mm -hmm. Um, But the Four Seasons, I've been told, is just gorgeous. Yeah. Wrong Four Seasons. So if you're wanting to book the Margaritaville Resort, it is bookable by phone only. So you can't even go online and do that. Oh. You hungry? Oh, uh, yeah. Let's eat some food. <laughs> Talk about the dining. So, this is really cool. I'm stoked that they're doing this. Uh, there is now a Disney Skyliner refillable mug. Oh, thank goodness. That you can use in your package or at the resorts. This new mug is shiny and red. And it has the logo for the Skyliner along with there's magic in the air across it. And it's a tumbler. It's not necessarily the kind with the handle. It's a uh, like stainless steel tumbler. So when you actually might want to save. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, this looks really nice. They're vacuum insulated, and they can keep your hot drinks hot for up to four hours and cold drinks cold for up to 12. These are only available at the Skyliner Resorts, and they are available for twenty nine ninety nine on its own or nineteen ninety nine, or just for an extra $10 if you've already gotten a package you can upgrade. So it's a very nice option. I don't think I need that. No, because usually ours just get thrown in the cupboard. Or mm-hmm. mine's a pencil holder at work. Is it really? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. that's what I, I think we gave. Well, I gave mine to Lucy. Unless there was one that's like really a, a neat design, and there is one right now that's the design of like the Animal Kingdom mural that we talked about. Yeah. I think last week there's one with that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Kate has a small issue with mugs listen, listen. and uh, water containers. Uh, we just recently purchased two Starbucks containers that look pretty. We didn't purchase uh, them; they were free. They were free when we get a discount on our coffee. How much Fight did you, me. <laughs> how much did you pay for that free perk? Which one are you talking about? All the, all the points you gathered up. I had a lot of points. How much did you pay for those points? I didn't pay anything for the points. Nothing at all. How did you get the points? They were free with a purchase. Oh! <laughs> but I, I purchased a drink and got oh, the points. Oh, sure, yeah. I get, why totally are you free. doubting me? You go totally to Starbucks, free. You, know, you have the app. I understand, but it costs money to get the points. Because you're buying a drink. You get the points from the drink. Anyway, we've got an issue with water containers and coffee mugs and mugs. We have an issue. I know how to free up some space. And shoes. You're we have an issue house. of Purses. shoes, too. Disney pins. There's a bucket down Disney here of animals. summer shoes. A bucket of summer shoes. Um, Because you can't wear winter shoes in the summer, Patrick. <laughs> Duh. I you own, have summer shoes. I own three pair of shoes. You have summer shoes. Some are not. You have Burks. Four. I have four pair of shoes to my name. Uh, I said that, that that's a cry for help <laughs> right there. You need an intervention. Anyway, we don't need any more mugs. No, but you know what we do, do need more of? Thank you, love. Frozen too. No, okay. some more Frozen stuff. No, please, no. I, I, I'm excited to see the film. It looks really good. Uh, oh, I thought you meant more Frozen two mugs. Oh no, 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 no. Okay. I'm not really big into Frozen like merchandise. Okay, I have, good. I have Sven at work. Yes, you do. That's about it. Do I have an Olaf? I think I have an Olaf too. I have a wall of Disney stuffed animals at work in my classroom. Anyway. So, because of the new movie coming out, Cry Royal Summer House is going to be making some changes, and the whole Norway area at Epcot will be making changes. You're going to be able to see Anna and Elsa wearing new outfits inspired by Frozen 2. Mm. Along with that, at Kringla Bakery Ugg Cafe, hope I got that right, is going to have a brand new chocolate buttercream cupcake inspired by the film with a white chocolate bruni on top. This is a little tiny lizard from the new film. It's very cute. I included a picture for Patrick. Oh, it's cute. And it's edible. Very cute. Uh, yeah, you can eat them. He's white chocolate. Mm. Mm, tasty. Eat them now. And there's going to be more announced, um, I believe, tomorrow. They're going to announce more, more surprises coming to Norway for the film. Because the film's opening this weekend. Mm. So there you go. Are we seeing Tonight, it? I think. I would like to. Yeah. Yeah. I enjoyed Frozen. Oh, huh? yeah. Mm. 
I remember when my first visit to Disney World, it was the summer where Frozen was, they were, they, it was so popular that they made their entire summer at Hollywood Studios all about Frozen. Mm -hmm. Like that was the big, you know how they have special events? That was the big thing that summer. Yeah. Yeah. So it was So you never saw the Matterhorn? That's in Disneyland. No. Pretty sure. What was the Norway ride before Frozen? Oh, you mean um, Maelstrom. Maelstrom. I never, That's what I no, mean. I never saw oh, Maelstrom. Okay. All right. Yeah. No. Uh, along with that, there are other offerings, other food offerings that are seasonal right now. Over at the French Quarter at the Scat Clack. <laughs> scat Cat. I can't. Ah, scat <laughs> Cats Club. I made it. Scat Cat Fever. <laughs> there is a special gingerbread Mickey beignet. So this is a place that often will have specialty themed beignets. Bougie. Like they had a pumpkin spice one. It's bougie. And now they have a gingerbread one. The gingerbread one is dusted with powdered sugar, pumpkin spice, and ginger. <laughs> and the best part, this is a secret menu item. Oh, Not that's on the menu. Awesome. You have to ask for it. It's only four do- four ninety nine, so it's very cheap, and it looks tasty. Mm, so cheap, go get some. Cheap. In the world of transportation. Please stand clear of the doors. There's a new Disney Plus bus. I must mess that one up too. Disney Plus bus now in Disney World, and the wrap on the bus features Captain Marvel, The Incredibles, BB-8, and so Rapunzel. When we were there, it seemed like there were almost more wrap buses than non-wrap buses. Correct. Yeah. And so that number is becoming. They're phasing larger. out the white buses. <laughs> Correct. Cool. Yeah. Uh, we have Disney Plus. Just to take a second to talk about that real quick, um, and we had no problems whatsoever. No, no. But we also did not get on the first couple days. Truly, we did. I did. I went without you. <laughs> <laughs> we have watched episodes one and two of The Mandalorian. Loved it. Yeah. Loved it. Now, where do you stand on this whole, like, there were no women in it? The Mandalorian? Yeah. There's going to be. I know, but the first episode, like, there wasn't maybe a single... Maybe Baby Yoda is a female. Maybe it's not know. Baby Yoda. No, there was actually well, debate on the Yoda. internet. There was actually debate on the internet about the fact that there were, the episode one happened and there wasn't a female strong character. That doesn't bother me. Good. All right. No, then because... I well, will stay. I mean, that didn't even cross my mind. I'm, I'm in for the story, but, you know, coming into it, you know you're going to see uh, Natalia Tana from Harry Potter and Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you. Uh, she's going to be in it. Um, there's another girl. I don't know her name, but, I mean, you saw some of the previews that she's going to be involved. And no. There were some angry people. No. No. I'm fine. I, I'm, I'm waiting for the moment that Pedro Pascal takes off his helmet to see... What's underneath? Oh dear! What makes a Mandalorian a Mandalor? They mad the the name was Mandalorian instead of Woman Delorean. Yeah, right. Yeah, it sounds like a female version of Don't the man car in it. Back to the Future. <laughs> Woman Delorean. <laughs> no, I was not upset. Okay. Uh, I. What else did we we? we wa- oh, well, Darkwing Duck. I watched. I watched the episode. Darkwing I Duck. watched the Muppet movie. Did you? I did. When? You had rehearsal oh, question okay. Mark? So I'm not the only one to watch things here without you. Yeah. You watch it without me. Yeah. I watched uh, the Muppet movie only because I hadn't seen that since I was a child. I and guess either. what? Mm. It holds up. Oh, I bet. I loved it. You know what doesn't hold up? Muppet Vision 3D. I love Muppet Vision 3D. <laughs> don't you start on me. It doesn't. Come, come, no. No, I love it. Don't. Don't it's don't at done. me. Um, what else did we watch? We watched, uh, well, we went through the entire lineup. That was fun. And then... Mm-hmm. Uh, we know that there's a lot more coming once contracts with uh, Netflix and other services Marvel and Marvel's are got done. Some stuff coming. We will be will be seeing more and more. I can't wait to see What If, the What If series from Marvel. Yeah. It's the animated series that features all of the original, not all of them, but a lot of the original actors yeah. who are now voicing animated characters. I had talked to somebody recently who said that they had a whole wall of Disney stuff and they were proud because whenever Disney took a movie out of the vault, they would purchase it. And they had a whole wall of Disney stuff and now they're like, no, well, throw that out. <laughs> yeah, right? We had just, what did we just bought? It was an Endgame or, yeah, now it's like, oh, it's on there now. So it's Captain Marvel. So it's Black Panther. All mm-hmm. of it's on there now. All the stuff yep. we just bought. Yep. Um, did you hear about the controversy? That they had to go back and label some of their very early movies with kind of, uh, they, they labeled them with warnings saying that this, this might contain some sensitive content. So like, sure, you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, sure. Like, <laughs> absolutely. Which is, I don't know, how do you feel about that? Do you feel like that, that needed to be there? No. Or? no, I think that we as a society are way too sensitive right now. And that um, when it was created and the time it was created, it was, there was no problem with it. Um, I mean, I, 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 as far as I'm concerned, I'm sure there were people that had problems with it. But, you know, it is what it is. It was created in a time when it was a different time. Mm-hmm. And some of that stuff obviously would never be created now. 
But um, I don't know. I, it, I think you don't you don't ignore the the past. It sounds like something you would hear in Lion King. Simba, you can't ignore the past. You know what? You better prepare yourself. Log out and log back in. <laughs> Reboot. <laughs> Reboot, Simba. Oh, let's talk about Star Wars. So we are, let's see, it's the 21st, 30 days in September, April, June, and November. So we're about 14 days away from the opening of Rise of the Resistance. That's in World. That's in Disney World in Hollywood Studios, yeah. It's, this one's opening before the Disneyland one. Yeah, what a slap weird. in the face. Um, so it's, it's only natural to want to speculate about how this is going to go down. Uh, I read something today. It's very interesting. As of two days ago, only four Walt Disney World resorts had any availability from December 4th through December 6th. What? Mm-hmm. So only four had uh, availability. Those four were Animal Kingdom Lodge, Grand Floridian, Caribbean Beach, and... Art of Animation, which I would assume is the sweets because the sweets take forever to sell. Um, the hours posted for no- December 5th, with, which is the opening of the ride, are 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. There are no posted extra magic hours right now. So lines actually, will there be, might be. There might be, actually. You lines know. will be long, is my guess. Because we had the whole um, entrance of Star Wars where we had people that were there at like 3 o'clock in the morning to to wait in line. I assume we're going to have the exact same thing. You're going to have people lining up outside of Hollywood Studios at like 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, even if the park doesn't open until 9. Absolutely, because they're going to want to be the ones to say, I rode this ride first. (laughs) And it's supposed to be like a big game-changing ride for Disney and it's what? It's it's 15 minutes long, the ride itself. So... Well, and that's the other thing, too, I'm going to be curious about. They talk about this 15-minute ride, but I think that Disney has a tendency to, like, I think in the um, Avatar ride, I think they include all that stuff where you go and you stand on the on the spot on the floor, and mm-hmm. they, they oh, I think yeah. they count that's, all that as part, part of, of the ride. And I enjoy that stuff. I'm of the camp that I enjoy the pre-ride theatrics. I think it, it, it's, it makes it more immersive. It brings you more into the story, even if you're dealing with some bad dialogue and bad acting at that point. Side note, that totally applies to the Fast and the Furious ride at Universal Studios. Your Some of family. the worst pre-show acting. That's another story. Yeah. Uh, I double-checked. Hollywood Studios currently has no extra magic hours posted for that day. That's, that's going to be a madhouse. I agree. They have extra magic hours that week on the 8th, but that's just typical extra magic. It's not like what they were doing for the opening, which was 6 to 9 in the morning. Well, but it also was a, a land opening. I, I don't know. Are people going to come out in droves again? They have said that the reason why... Galaxy's Edge didn't see a lot the the big number of crowds they were expecting to begin with was that people were going to wait until the second ride was opened. If you're going to buy tickets, we might as well buy them when the whole land is open. There's I nothing guess. close, which makes sense. If you're going to do a vacation and you're going to spend thousands of dollars and you're going to go and go, oh, I didn't get to the big ride. I have to come back now, but I don't have the budget. You're going to wait. I guess. So I am anxious to see how that works, uh, what it's like. If there's there's going to be issues. I mean, think about Hagrid's opening, and that was. Um, that was basically, you know, just a roller coaster, but it was more than that, as we well, found out. Well, I, I, you know, I'm happy that we our next trip isn't until May. And yeah, so there's going to be a lot mm-hmm. of time to work out some bugs. Absolutely, and we're going to hear a lot of stories too. Whether the ride breaks down a lot, I'm going to be very curious about that. Disney's usually really good about not having the problems that Hagrid Ride had. Yeah, I will say I didn't really. I don't remember when Avatar opened. If I remember hearing a ton about. The, the only down. thing the only thing I remember is that when they had the renovation to Flight of Passage, that they had issues with, when I think it was Avatar too. They had issues with keeping the computers cool enough because oh, of the yeah, you're overheating. Right, you're right, yeah. And so, you know, it's those kind of things where those are lessons learned and you know, Disney's really good about learning those lessons. And plus Hagrid's ride is a moving ride. Whereas Avatar, you just you don't really move. You're just in the same spot. What? Yeah, shh, shh. I don't tell anyone. I thought I wrote a pantry. I'm also anxious to see what happens when this ride opens, if anything happens with FastPass at this point. Because nothing's available If Smuggler's Run gets added to a Tier 1 FastPass. No, I bet it doesn't. But Smuggler's Run is not a popular ride. It, it's the swirling alien space saucer of that land. <laughs> yeah. It's the Navi River Journey it's of that land. It's the Navi River Journey of Isn't that land. Isn't it funny how they, they get those, like... Monikers like attached to them. Yeah. Like, is there any? Are there any others that are like, this is our new two rides, but this one is the worst one. Yeah, of the ride. That, well, it's it, it's a new thing for Disney. We're opening mm-hmm. this area. One of the rides is going to stink for children, mm-hmm. and one of the rides is going to be for adults. That's funny. Yeah. 
Are you the alien swirling saucer of your family? I am the alien swirling saucer <laughs> of, of this, this relationship. Of this podcast. <laughs> oh my God, that is so me. <laughs> that is so me. Oh man. Well, I've got one more story for us this week. <laughs> I've got one more story, and this is a, this is a terrible story, but I had oh, to share it because well. I want people out there listening to be careful when they're booking their trips. So here is our final story of the day. You touched the butt. Yeah, that's the that's one. new. I like that, but now it says butt. And now we're no longer a G. I've been oh, but oh, but kids say butt all the time. Oh. They did in Finding Nemo. That's G. Okay. That's G money. Anyway, <laughs> um, this week we found out that there was a South London-based travel agency. I, I use that loosely because I'm not even sure at this point. The name was called Go West with Mickey, and they were selling packages to Disneyland Paris. Okay, So come to find out that they sold almost $480,000 worth of trips to Disneyland Paris to hundreds of families who later found out that their trips were never booked. That's a poop ton of money. Yeah. So people were like going to the resort, getting there and being told, we don't have any record of your booking. And parents were like, well, what are we going to do? Like leave. So they had to book another like room or tickets there. Um, And you would think like, okay, you have to make sure that your agency that you deal with is absolutely tied with Disney. Like, and how does someone do that? Um, I mean, you can, you can absolutely check into that. You could, you could call Disney and say like, are they a partner? Cause you have to have that kind of handshake. You have to, wow. you have to, have to, have to. Cause that's, that's how we book. We, we have a website that is a Disney travel agent I'm website. Sorry. Who's we? Uh, I'm a travel agent. I'm a travel agent with the vacation Oh, I can book you trips and not take your money. And yeah, well, that's, that's what I'm trying to get to. Yes. I'm so a travel if, agent. if someone calls you, mm-hmm. they have the ability to call Disney and say, Hey, I'm working with Kate at the vacation and Disney will be like, Oh yeah, we know her. Yeah. No, I mean they, they could, you could, <laughs> yep. They know me by first name basis. Yep. <laughs> Kate? I call oh, so much. Great. Yep. That's, that's how that works. No. And we, we have to go through a registration process where we provide our, I add a number, which is the Ooh. agency, Number that says this is an agency that that you know is legit. It has you know a hmm. good standing, and we log in that way. It tracks our sales. It, it tracks our benefits and our commissions and all that. And stuff. it probably checks the the reviews that people leave behind, whether they're happy or unhappy with the service. They don't. They don't really. I don't know if they offer that through that website. Um, yeah. But you can probably but go on like four hundred and eighty thousand dollars in this company's pocket. Yeah. What happens to them now? Well, the firm has since closed. Its Facebook page and website have been deleted. The firm has stopped answering WhatsApp messages, and they've even blocked customers' numbers. Disneyland Paris came out and issued a statement. They said that this firm, Go West with Mickey, is not an official commercial partner. Shocking! And that the firm is not an it's not an authorized reseller. Yeah, but you know there are people that won't hear that. I'm telling you now, stop. Oh, so the six people <laughs> that listen book. to this do not book with us. You're saved. Hip, hip, hooray. <laughs> and it costs you, saved you nothing. Yeah. So if, if, you know, do your due diligence, please, before you ever book, even if it's not with me, you know, do, shame on you if do you your, do your research. Make sure that if you're, because like I said, you can go online and, and book your package the same amount if you do it by yourself. But with me, you get free help with the planning of every detail. And you're such a delight. Um, I love Disney. Yeah, you're kind of delightful. And, and you know what? The thing is, I'll tell you, is that if you're a great client, if you're easygoing, I want to work all the harder for you. Hmm. Truly. I will, this I will. explains a lot about my marriage. <laughs> <laughs> you need to work harder, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> you have saved us. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you for tuning in this week. This was fun. <sighs> yeah. I had a good time. Good. Yeah. That's the important thing. Yeah, this is... Just above the Navi River journey this week. <laughs> Slightly below uh, Alien Swirling Saucers. Uh, Smuggler's Run is my Kinda goal. Kind of right on the same level as Smuggler's Run. That's my goal right there. Smuggler's Run if you're the engineer. If you're well, the pilot, no, different. No, Smuggler's Run right now, not, <laughs> not in two weeks. Not in two weeks. <laughs> when something oh better gosh. comes along. I, I'm, I'm curious, too, to see just how many people are going to be there. I, I, I don't know. I feel like it's gotten hyped up a little bit more just because it's supposed to be this brand new, amazing I, ride. I don't know you could have, if, if it's possible to hype up the ride as much as the land was hyped up. And also, the effect on the wait time for Flight of Passage once this ride opens. 
Will it will it bring it down a bit or will it not no, touch it? No, I don't think it'll touch it. Yeah. Well, be because and here's and here's why I think that because I think you have uh, an exorbitant amount of people right now that are planning to come to Disney in December and January to ride that ride, mm-hmm. but they're not going to do a one day package. Yeah, they're going to do multiple days, and so there will be a day that those people will be in Animal Kingdom and the Avatar ride is still very popular. Yeah, so I'm going to say it right now that our uh, Tuesday December 11th episode will be about. Rise of the Resistance. Is that we'll, the next time we're recording? No, I'm just saying I'm planning that's, ahead. That's I'm making next, a plan. That's probably the next time we're making recording. a plan. Just sorry. probably no. It, it will definitely talk about that solely. I think that episode. There's going to be a ton of ton of things to talk about. So uh, get hyped. Are we going to wrap all this equipment up and take it to your family for Thanksgiving in case the conversation turns political and we want to go somewhere? Why would why, we're just gonna? Oh, we don't want to talk about politics. We're, we're going to be basement. in the car. We're going to the basement. Uh, we'll see you later. <laughs> Talk about Disney. We're going to go to our happy place right now. Yep. So thank you again for tuning in. If you if you have fun listening to us and uh, want to leave us a review, please go on to Apple Podcasts, and we always like to read nice reviews on here. And uh, we hope that you have a safe and happy weekend, and we will see you next Tuesday. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.